Next, we're going to hear from Ryan Patterson. He is an artist and the former public art program manager with the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts. Ryan's going to present an overview of his research around the provenance of an ambitious collection of public artworks that were commissioned for Lake Clifton High School in Baltimore in 1970. Ryan, you're on. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to be with you and uh, amongst you. So I began this research uh, in 2017 and 2018. It was really on the heels of a lot of uh, reflection and critique around monuments that we talked about earlier tonight and um, sculptures in our city's landscape that you know perpetuated white supremacy. It was such a um, breath of air to dig into these artworks um, as and find a story of a diverse group of artists who made a really compelling um, collection of works uh, that spoke with, with strong voice and a mastery of materials. Next slide. So what became the East Coast's largest high school campus started out as a reservoir next to Johns Hopkins Summer Estate in Northeast Baltimore. Uh, by the late 1890s, the city had acquired this property and it became a public park. And later the lake was filled in to make way for a high school designed to serve the growing baby boom population of students. Next slide. This timeline uh, briefly overviews the development and uh, the, the creation of the school, which uh, broke ground at a pivotal time in American history. $130,000 was identified to commission artworks. Go ahead, next slide. The design firm who had won the bid oversaw the selection of artists and used that $130,000 to select a diverse group of seven artists who made impressive works that had strong points of view, um, mastery of materials. And I wanna go through each uh, and touch on them briefly. I think their stories are important and exciting to think about where we've come in our field. I highlight Betty Wells because she's featured many of the promotional images associated with this project that I'm going to share. Next slide. So it's clear from the outset that this project was intended to be some kind of a model for how the program should run. And I found 40 slides of Betty Wells' process from concept development. Here you can see the designers kind of mansplaining the layout to her before she develops her proposal and the large uh, printout of the proposed high school campus behind her. Next slide. Betty was an advocate in Baltimore for artist employment opportunities. And I believe that she actually convinced uh, then Mayor William Donald Schaefer to implement our city's percent for art program. And she was an active muralist uh, and mosaic artist throughout the early 60s. Here we see her working in the studio. And while it's clear she has assistance throughout the process and in the slides uh, that follow this, uh, she's always the lead artist and in charge of what's happening. The uh, process that is outlined through these slides looks remarkably like our best practices today. Next slide. It has to be noted though, that while the artists were working in their studios, the community that Lake Clifton was intended to serve was not spared from the tragedy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination and the subsequent uprising. 500,000 National Guard troops descended on Baltimore City and occupied the park where the school is to be located Next slide. But the artworks did happen and were installed. And what can we learn from looking at these artists? What do we learn about artists making work in a pivotal time, very similar to the one we live in now? And how will the stories of these artists be remembered? I also wonder how the stories of the artists we work with today. So here's Betty Wells finished mosaics made of glass tiles. Next slide. The micro mosaics create their own contour, they shimmer in the light. To me, they kind of bridge a 1950s uh, space age modernism with a 1970s earthy palette that um, we see in some of the other works. Next slide. Jordi Bonet was an artist uh, that was prolific in his short, or was his career through the 60s and 70s. These large aluminum panels were cast from found objects. Next slide. He grew up in Barcelona and he actually fell out of a tree at the age of seven and broke his arm and ended up losing his arm because there was not sufficient medical care. 
as an artist, he combined these found object collages to create um, um, compositions that I find imaginative and provocative. Uh, I think that they reference the space race and um, astrological projection in some way. Next slide. Olin Lansing Russum, or Russ, and his wife occupied a uh, red cedar barn that they had converted into a studio about 25 miles north of Baltimore. And uh, they um, created these handmade interlocking tiles that I feel reference the um, geomorphology of the area as well as the agricultural landscapes around where the studio was located. Next slide. You can see patterns of um, waterways and the types of landscapes that may have existed in this location prior to the park in this one. Alexandra Kosuba was the other female artist that was part of the group. Uh, her and her husband emigrated to the US after um, the Nazi occupation in Lithuania, where she was born, shut down the school where she was studying architecture. Next slide. Aside from the stone walls that she was known for in the public art sphere, Alexandra Kasuba created site-specific experimental environments from tensile fabric. And I think we can see that same work here where she's applying these tiles over a subwall that turns the entire plane into a set of convex and concave curves. Next slide. John Roden was one of two African-American artists. And I feel like these uh, wall scale, sculptural reliefs um, look almost as like uh, brush strokes um, turned into physical form. Next slide. But when you get closer in the detail, they're bejeweled with uh, welded textures and glass beads. Um, John was a, a master and if, if quiet, was recognized as a genius amongst his peers. And uh, there is a um, collection at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts named in his honor. Next slide. One of the most compelling works is Second Genesis by Ed Wilson. Ed Wilson was a highly recognized public sculptor with a variety of, uh, who worked in a variety of media. He made a monument to JFK in uh, Binghamton, New York, just before this piece. He um, is recognized in Bearden and Henderson's History of African American Art for his jazz musicians piece. But this piece, Second Genesis, stands out to me. Next slide. Oh, oh no, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ryan.